The Eric Ten Hag era really is about to begin. On Tuesday, we play Liverpool in the first game that we'll get to see how Manchester United play under Eric Ten Hag. Now, I know that you share a lot of frustration that I share that Tyrell Malasir is the only senior new signing that we've got inside this squad. But there's still going to be so much to learn, I think, from this game against Liverpool. So what I want to do in this video is run through how I think Eric Ten Hag will set Manchester United up without Cristiano Ronaldo. Because that's a big, big question about this preseason tour. How can United cope without Ronaldo? We'll see the first signs of that in this game here against Liverpool. I'll run through all the news, all the news about the preseason tour squad that has travelled. That's been released. Everything that Ten Hag has been saying in his first interview out on the preseason tour, and then we'll run through all the tactical questions. If you do enjoy the video by the end of it, please consider joining the United People's TV community. I'm going to try and cover the preseason in as much detail as I possibly can. Hit the notification bell as well if you want to get a ping every time we go live. But yeah, the squad is landing now. We're in Bangkok, and I'm excited to look. The preseason is a preseason. We won't learn anything definitively. But learning is what this preseason is about. It wouldn't matter who we're playing. The fact that we're playing Liverpool tomorrow, I don't really think changes anything. If we were playing Preston or if we were playing, I don't know, a Bangkok 11, I think Ten Hag would still want to learn the same thing. The results of these preseason friendlies will not define whether Manchester United's season is a success or not. But it can help with, with building momentum. Now, if we look at the squad that's flown over there, this is the full squad. You've got De Gea, Heaton, Bishop and Kovar as the four goalkeepers. You've got Bay, De Low, Laird, Lindelof, Maguire, Malasia, Shaw, Tellez, Twanzebe, Varane, and Wan-Bissaka. The most notable different person missing there, sorry, is Phil Jones, who stayed behind and he's doing his own separate preseason training. Also, Alvaro Fernandez isn't there. Sounds like he's going to be going out on loan. In midfield, we move on. And I'll be honest, the midfield, it goes to show how much we need to strengthen this midfield, really. Look at that. Ahmad Bruno, Fred Garner, Hannibal Iqbal, Matomino Pellistri, Savage, and Van der Beek. We really really need to strengthen that midfield everybody knows that and up front again we need we need to strengthen really chong elanga garnacho martial rashford and sancho i think it's 31 members of the squad who have gone out there and everyone's concerned of course we're concerned because we haven't made all those key signings but there's still as i said will be things to learn you go here this is what eric ten Hag said in his first interview in the build-up to the preseason game against Liverpool. He goes, of course, I want to bring energy in my team. I must say the players do really well. They're focused. They bring themselves, for themselves, the energy. You see they enjoy playing football. They enjoy playing football together and they work really well together. And from everything that we've seen, the pre, I've covered the preseason preparations in as much detail as I possibly can. And I think you've enjoyed the videos. And I'll, I want to say thank you for that because it's nice that content like that resonates with fans it's not just all doom and gloom it's not just all about transfers it's about focusing on what we can see in front of our eyes as well um at ten Hag here saying that i have to learn i have to know my squad the personnel the individuals and the players that is i think one of the biggest advantages from the tour we have two weeks to work really close together and we will learn about each other because i want to learn about them and they want to learn about me my coaches and my assistants this is I know there are massive negatives about not having everybody on the preseason tour, but if we're trying to look for a silver lining, there's going to be a lot of the youngsters here who will get more eyeballs, more opportunities, and more focus from Eric Ten Hag. So maybe the likes of Garnacho, Iqbal, Charlie Savage, Hannibal, Pellistri might get more focus and more time to impress, and maybe they will take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, we want to play a proactive style of football, said Ten Hag. This is the crucial part before we head into looking at the tactics. On the ball and off the ball, trying... To do that has to be our intention. The coaches bring it over to the team that we are in every situation proactive. We are brave and willing to have the ball to give each other options, but also off the ball to get the pressing style is what we're working for together. Now, we've seen, as I said, I've covered the preseason in quite a bit of detail. We've seen lots and lots of this. But let's head over to the tactics board now. Having seen the squad, having heard from Eric Ten Hag, I'm going to predict what our starting 11 is going to be against Liverpool. And it's probably going to be wildly wrong because it's, it must be the hardest 11 to predict ever. But you can see that here. This is what I've gone for. I've gone for David De Gea in goal. And I'll run through each position and where Ten Hag really wants to learn. Shaw and wan as the full-backs with Twan Zebe and Lindelof as the two centre-backs. In midfield, Matomane with Garner. Donny van der Beek as the number 10 with a front three of Rashford, Martial and Garnacho. Now, as I said... This isn't about putting an 11 out to beat Liverpool. 
Because we're probably going to lose. Liverpool are a very well judged, one of the best teams in the world right now. This is a Manchester United team which is A, learning, B, in its first game since Eric Ten Hag took over. C, we are not the finished product yet. There will be quite a few new key signings. But in terms of learnings, right, I'd say the most important things that he wants to learn out of this team there are, can Wan-Bissaka, can he do it? Now, the, a big reason that I've put this back four in is because wan has been there since day one of preseason. So is Tuanzebe, so is Lindelof. I would probably like to put Varane on. And bear in mind, the majority of these players, they will come on. It will be probably a completely different team for the, for the second half. But I'm putting a lot of these players in because the majority of them have been there since day one of preseason. Therefore, they're going to be a week ahead in terms of fitness. Therefore, I think they'll probably deal with the intensity of the first half against Liverpool better than other players. But of course, McTominay, I think he only joined up in week two. So it's not, it's not a full 11 there. But in terms of the things I'm going to be looking for, first and foremost, I want to see this back line here. If you, if you were to go last season, you would probably see our average position for the back line will be right on the edge of our own box. And what Ten Hag will want to be doing with this team is getting them to get the average position up there. So I want to see everybody doing this. The starting positions of every single player inside that defence and midfield coming up slightly. Whether as, as I've got McTominay and Garner down here, it could be other, it could be other people. It could be by doing this, and by having an increased average position on the pitch for everybody, you make you make the pitch smaller, you make the pressing game easier. And as Eric Ten Hag said, he wants to have energy in his team. What did he say? Let's go back to that board here. We want to play a proactive style of football, on the ball and off the ball. And the easiest way to do that is by making the pitch smaller. Now, as I said, if I'm looking at this back four, and I really want to see Madisea, and I think we'll see him in the second half. But Shaw's been there since day one, and so has wan -Bissaka. And there's huge question marks about both of them, really. Shaw, buck up. Madisea is going to take your spot in that starting eleven. Simple as that. wan -Zebe, I think he'll get a chance. I mean, everyone's going to get a chance on a preseason tour, won't they? But Maguire is obviously the one that there are most questions about in this. But because Maguire's not been there since day one of the preseason, I think Tuanzebe and Lindelof will get the chance together. Now, midfield, this is where there's going to be a hell of a lot of questions. And I could be spectacularly wrong here. In terms of the personnel, McTominay has to prove to Eric Ten Hag that he can play that Edson Alvarez role. The Edson Alvarez role at Ajax, if you're looking at... Um, he was playing alongside him. Graven Birch, he'd be the one to sort of drop deeper and be the one to try and build up possession. Al Alvarez was responsible for breaking up the play and recycling possession. And that's all that McTominay has to do this year. He doesn't have to worry about bringing the ball forward, uh, breaking through the lines. He should probably have Frankie de Jong alongside him to do that. McTominay will be tasked with being that ball-winning, possession recycling. And by that, I mean... It, Possession recycling means just simple balls. You don't always have to find a 30-yard through ball breaking the lines. Just keep the ball moving. Keep it active. And James Garner, we all need to learn how good he can be in that sort of De Jong role. I don't think he'll play in that. He's better, he's better going forward than he is there. But this could be an any number of different players. Fred could be there. Hannibal could be there. You could see Donny drop in there. I've got no idea. But I'm guessing these two. And I'm putting Donny in for the start here. I think Donny will help, would help the team play a little bit better in the beginnings. I told you, this is a big reason why De Jong is going to be such a transformative signing, if or when that happens. Because he knows the system inside out. He won't have to be coached into how to playing it. And neither will Donny van der Beek. And these players will be learning, and it will be uh, to do it up against Liverpool is going to be a very intense environment. I think Donny will help that. Certainly the first half, and Bruno will probably come on in the second half. And if we're looking about movement, X, Y, Z, I'm looking forward to And again, if you're looking at big questions, big question about Donny, what he can do. Big question about McTominay and what he can do. Big question about Wan-Bissaka. Can he be that proactive right back? Can Shaw show that he can keep um, Manasseh out of the team? Lots of questions there, and the questions only continue when you go further up the pitch. Now, I've gone for a front three there. Rashford on the left, Martial through the middle, and Garnacho on the right-hand side. And each one of them, again, it's all about learnings. Going back to what Eric Ten Hag said here, he said, look, 
Um, wrong thing. It's this one here. I have to learn to know my squad, the personnel, the individuals and the players. That is, I think, one of the biggest advantages of the tour. And if we're looking at questions that need to be answered, it's number one, can Rashford refine his form on the left-hand side? It's a huge question about Rashford this season. Of course, with Ronaldo possibly, probably leaving, he may well end up playing through the middle more. But Rashford's best position at Manchester United, we know it's been left, left wing, always has been. Martial. Can he operate as that number nine? Can we rely on him to be a goal scorer this season? How will he play if he's sort of operating, dropping a little bit deeper? Because if you're looking at how um, Tadic and Van der Beek played in 2018-19 at Ajax, a lot of the time Tadic would drop deep like that with Donny Van der Beek going in to fill the gap that he leaves. And that sort of switch made it harder to mark the Ajax players, made it easier to play a fluid style of football. Can Martial do that? We don't know. And Garnacho. Now Garnacho. Played out on the left wing more often than not for the under-18s last season in the FA Youth Cup. He may well do that again. But questions, I think, have to be asked as to who will play on that right wing. You could see Alanga start here. You could see Garnacho start here. You could see Palistri start here. And maybe you're more likely to see Palistri there. And maybe Garnacho is just being held down as a left winger with challenging for that spot with Rashford. But maybe he's going to... I'm probably wrong on this one. That will probably more be like Palistri. But I've gone for that as a front three. And as I said, this team, this starting 11, it's just all about... By the way, the only reason that Chong, Maguire and uh, Juan Bissaka are different shades of red is because I ran out of red. There's so many players in this squad. But that's what I'm going to go for for the first 11. And as I said, the main things I'm looking for are a higher line. I want to see this back line here. I don't want to see that camped on the edge of our own box. I want to see us play a little bit higher, have a little bit more confidence that we can cover the space in behind. No better team to try that against than Liverpool. I want to see how we play in terms of possession in midfield. How can we play with triangles? Can we move the ball around well? Can we, more, can we do that good? Out of possession, we need to see this front three, front four, pressing. Pressing as a team, pressing as a unit. How can we do that? What about the overlaps from Shaw and Misaka? What about Madison when he comes on? There really are so many questions and I'm looking forward to it. I am looking for, and I'm not just saying that for the sake of the video, I'm looking forward to seeing how we play differently. This is going to be the beginnings of a new system. And we might get pumped. But we'll play the same system in the second game. We'll play the same system in the third game. Game by game, we will get better. It's a kind of a shame that we've got to play Liverpool in the first game. But it is what it is. You let me know what you think about the starting eleven, who you would start against Liverpool. I hope you've been enjoying the content here on United People's TV. I've been really enjoying doing it. Because as I said, I think it's proactive content. It's content that's looking ahead, looking forward. And not just being naively positive. But I'm seeing positives in the preseason. I brought them to you here. And there's a lot of reason to be frustrated about that starting 11, that midfield. It's not good enough to compete in the Premier League. We know that. We need more. But what can we expect to see and learn from this game? I've run through what I think. You can let me know what you think in the comments below, as you always do.